Welcome. I'm Sebastian Mafud, and you're listening to WCAT Radio, the on-air wing of En Route Books and Media, bringing you the dulcet sounds of Catholic wisdom with Bob Olson, who will now introduce today's show and speaker. Welcome to Try Oneness, a program with Joe Avalos to encourage people to share their experience with God, their miracles, their music, their poetry. Share your life. And now here he is, Joe Avalos. Hi, Joe. Hey, Bob. Happy Fourth of July, Independence Day. You know, great. It was a good day. Good day yesterday. That's beautiful. And- I've been trying to discern what to talk about today and, uh, you know, talking about independence. You know, independence is good unless it's independence from God you're looking for. You're better off being dependent on God than being independent, like I was in my past. You know, uh, true freedom, they say, is being a slave to the Lord, and I agree with that now because if, if we can get to the point where we're doing God's will and imitating Jesus and, uh, putting one foot in front of the other every day and trying to take care of what God places there instead of creating our own life, we have a an easier time, you know. It's, it's not easy doing things our own way all the time. And uh, I have a couple of locutions I, I think I should share today. And, uh, you know, one of them is from, I think, from Our Lady, um, uh, Our Lady of the Americas Lamentation. It's a, it's a poem I wrote around Christmas time several years ago when I was in the driveway at the peace house where I was yesterday. And I was celebrating Christmas there, and I went outside, and I had my iPhone, and I started getting a locution. I decided just to record everything into the phone. And uh, I thought I was writing a poem about my mother, and when it was finished, it wasn't about my mother. It was about our country, and I think it was from Our Lady. Of course, we never know, but... uh, it wasn't that positive, and that kind of rattled me, because usually the locutions I get were nice, you know. But I guess, like, life is good and bad, and, uh, you know, the people in heaven, I guess, are just as concerned about what's going on in the world. I mean, I used to think heaven was a place where everything is just hunky-dory. I think heaven's a lot like it is down here. You know, there's good and bad things going on all the time that have to be addressed. And there's prophecies that we don't like, and there's prophecies that we do like. And there's discernments that we like and discernments that we don't like. And that's just part of our uh, salvation journey. And uh, I used to think, you know, you die and go to heaven and just like sitting under palm trees being fed grapes and stuff like that. And I don't believe that anymore. I believe that there's work to be done when you get there, too. And it's just a continuation. If we start doing things right here that, Heaven is just a continuation of what we begin in this world. And I feel I've tasted heaven on earth already since I got sober and uh, took the Life in the Spirit course and read all these books and started doing the poetry and everything. Uh, It is possible to have heaven on earth and have it continue when you die. Well, for you, uh, when you became sober and turned your life over to God, it became heaven all the way to heaven. There you go. My good friend Richard Roy says that all the time. It's heaven all the way to heaven. And uh, that is certainly true in my life. And I love the Franciscan philosophy, and I love being with nature. And uh, imitating Jesus is good, but imitating St. Francis is good too, I think, because he's a great saint to imitate. His contact with nature, his belief, Mm -hmm. preach the gospel at all times, and when necessary, use words and... uh, the book I read about him, how he used to go into a cave for meditation and he'd be naked in there and he'd just sit in silence and say, who are you, Lord? Then he'd meditate for hours sometimes and then he'd switch to, who am I, Lord? You know? And I, I'm, I'm assuming when he got the stigmata and everything that he, he started to realize that he is who he's asking about when he does it right, you know? And... uh what a magnificent belief somebody has. And then Padre Pio, too, I was just looking at one of his uh, prayers tonight before we got on. I picked up a prayer card uh, about him at uh, St. John's Basilica last week. And, uh, you know, both of them had the stigmata. And uh, 
Jeez. And they got that from being so good at imitating Christ that they actually received his wounds as a further blessing. And uh, then they used their wounds to heal other people, just like Christ did. Because people saw that and then believed more in Jesus. And St. Francis used to say, preach the gospel at all times and when necessary, use words. He went out in pairs, like the apostles, with his other monks, Franciscans, and uh, they walked around town and did things for people. They didn't just preach the gospel. They, they practiced love and service like we do in my program. It's amazing. And the St. Francis prayer is part of my program. Bill Wilson uh, was a quasi-Catholic, I think. You know, he had some Catholic advisors. And uh, it's just so many good things going on in the world. But uh, I want to share some prophecies that aren't all roses, because life is not all roses. Uh, life is roses and thorns, and uh, there's a purpose for both sides of it. So I want to start with well, that. That's very, you were, the story you were talking about with St. Francis. Um, he got brothers together, and he said, we're going into town to preach. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, as they went around town, uh, they prayed with a couple people. They uh, they did it. They had food for other people, and they went all through the town. And they got ready and to leave to go back home. And uh, one of the brothers says, "Well, when are we going to preach?" And he said, "We just did." Yeah. <laughs> So true, right? Yeah. We're preaching every time we're being a power of an example for other people, you know. And, you know, it's so important to to be the change you want to see in the world, which is what St. Francis did so well and what Christ did so well. He came to be the change in the world, not to tell people how to change. He came to show people how to change. And he came to show people how to die, loving and serving your brothers and sisters and forgiving everybody who hurts you. So, uh, So hard, though. So I was thinking about stuff like this for the past couple of days, and last Sunday I was in church at St. Joseph's in uh, Danbury where they have the statue of St. Jude, the statue of St. Therese, and the statue of Padre Pio, and, and basically all the saints I petition to are at St. Joseph's there. It's amazing. They have St. Rose of Lima there too, I think. Uh, oh, no, St. Rita, not St. Rose, St. Rita, which is interesting. So uh, I was sitting there after after confession and doing some meditation because I had to go to 4 o'clock Mass because I had to teach Golden Safety on Sunday. And uh, I'm sitting there meditating, and this came to me, and I think it's a locution from God. And uh, so I heard in my heart, So why is it that when a man sins, he fears me? Can he ever be apart from me? Is he not a part of me always? Can an atom in a table be anything other than part of a table? I am who am, and is not man a part of everything that is? You make your God too small when you try to understand me. You are a part of me always. The only exception is when you choose to use free will to think you are apart from me, and that causes you great pain but you do it anyway because of free will, the gift and the curse, the cross we all carry. So Jesus had the gift of free will too, but he chose to use the Father's will 100% of the time and he never lived in sin. And he understands that we sin, but I think what he doesn't understand is when we don't admit that we sin and we live in a lie and we don't go to confession and, and we think that we're always right and we become self-righteous idiots, thinking that nobody else in the world is right except us. And then we get to the point where we're living in sin, and we get in a seat of our sin. So uh, I like this locution. And uh, it's kind of my belief that we are part of, everybody's a part of God. I mean, when we get our will out of the way, it'll work through us, like he did with St. Francis and with Padre Pio, you know. He'll let us be as much of him as we want to be if we get out of the way. He'll even give us the wounds he had if we go far enough so that we can help 
and join in the suffering that he's still doing for us. You know, uh, it gives me comfort now that I never used to have comfort for this reason, knowing that I don't suffer alone. And it's not just other people that are suffering with me. When I'm suffering, he's suffering. When I'm happy, he's happy. It's just total union when we don't use our, our mind and our will to separate ourselves from God, we become other Christ. We are other Christ, actually. And uh, when we believe that, we have an easier life. Not fun all the time, but easier when we use his will instead of our own will. So, uh, the location I got last year on my parents' wedding anniversary I wanted to sign to share. Hold on a second. I think it was a location from here. It was on my parents' wedding anniversary last year. This this is my parents' anniversary today. I think it's their 70th. And I'm sure they're having a good time up there, and I'm sure they're helping us down here, too, because they always did that. Well, the dawn of time, I think this is from our lady. Maybe not, though. Flying high the wicked ways of the world, destroying all on impact. While innocent crashes, innocence crashes, evil smiles, and justice frowns. Liberty and justice for all has become liberty or justice for none. Pick your poison. Keith smiles at chaos, knowing it will eventually prevail. For all is necessary for the human condition. And both evil and good seasons all for eternal bliss. As the moon bleeds sorrow and the earth quakes, the hands of time strike midnight as the sun awaits a new dawn. Will mankind awake or continue its self-induced coma? Only time will tell a soul. Then peace and justice will return. Earlier you were talking about suffering and uh, in uh, Sister Faustina's diary, she said, Today during Mass I saw the Lord Jesus in the midst of his sufferings, as though dying on the cross. He said to me, My daughter, meditate frequently on the sufferings which I have undergone for your sake, and then nothing of what you suffer for me will seem great in you. You please me most when you meditate on my sorrowful passion. Join your little sufferings to my sorrowful passion so that they may have infinite value before my majesty. Mm-hmm. Very similar to the Holy Face devotion to reparation. And uh, it's amazing how things are similar, you know, and this mm-hmm. This locution that I'm going to share is like a lamentation, One Nation Over God, which is a locution I believe is from Our Lady about the state of our country right now. And, of course, this this country was one nation under God for quite a while, but it seems to have taken a turn in the opposite direction lately with all the pride and greed and lust and all that stuff. So uh, I got this locution, and I was sharing about it earlier, uh, Around Christmas, Christmas Eve, or Christmas, Christmas Eve it was uh, three or four years ago at the VD's house in Stanford. I started getting a locution. I thought it was a poem about my mother. I went out to the driver with my iPhone and just recorded it, and I went to the library and transcribed it, typed it into my computer, word for word, the way I said it into the iPhone. So it's kind. Of, this just came out, you know, one line at a time, like a lot of my stuff does. So I heard in the driveway on Christmas time. And I think it's about our country. She was an artist of the heart. She was a designer of dreams. She was a believer in hope and love and all the good things that life has to bring. She was a whisper in a noisy world and a relief in a place of despair and hopelessness. She was a song in the wind of time and a poet in the melody of life. She was a designer of small things and of large things alike. She was never ruthless, rude, or impolite. She was great in so many ways that it spins the head to think. What has become of her? Where has she gone? What is her next journey? 
What place is this without her grace-filled presence? What love is this without her great support and love? What generation is this that wastes away in the wilderness, a disgrace of our times? What hope for those who choose society over spirituality? What wasters in time they have become? What a disgrace to the creator of all good things. What a bunch of lost souls in a desert full of tumbleweed. When will our hope return? When will we get down on our knees and pray for help? When will we humble ourselves as our fathers did? When will we love again as our mothers did? When will we design for ourselves a life free of things of this world and bound to the principles of spirituality that the God of our fathers designed this country with? When will hope repair the damage that greed, pride, and lust have done? In only a whisper, in only a moment, in only a sweet song will our time be done. And to what avail is it to resist the fight, the fight to save us from the God who made us? Why do we run to the things that are evil and from his graceful hands? When will we ever remember the pains we have caused ourselves? And when we look back and see the good things that God has done in justice to correct our deeds, who do we go to when dark days are here? Now that the word of our day is fear, when the mist of time descends upon our worldly thrones, when the wastefulness catches up with us, who will we go to? Who will we turn to? When will we reopen prayer in schools? When will we stop giving government assistance to immoral acts and deeds? When will we love our country as much as our forefathers did? Will we ever return to the way we were, close to our God and far from our fears? Turn off the black box that magnifies evil. Turn around and open a good book, or better yet, open the good book. Read to your children. Read to your families. Read to yourselves. Learn the truth again. Start our crippled country over again with the principles of love and justice and peace. Liberty, yes, for all, but only with justice for all. And only with time will our wounds heal. We can't make a thing happen. We must repent and let things happen. Then Our Lady will return. We can't keep kicking God out of our country and expect him to have a good time. We can't keep kicking God out of our schools and expect children to have any respect for their parents. Well, Joe, you said when uh, when the recusion you got, you recorded it. That's this one, Bob. Oh, that's the one you did. The well, one I just no, recited no. is the one I recorded into my iPhone. Normally, normally, do you, do you write them out or do you record them? I normally write them. This was the exception. I just, I just, the poem started coming to me and I just went out to the driveway because I knew I was getting the locution and I turned my phone on and then I just kept talking into the phone and that's Good. the way the words came on the iPhone and I you know, I took the recording then and listened to the recording and typed it verbatim onto my computer when I had time. But I don't normally do it that way. You know, I normally just write it as it's coming. But this one was coming like faster and I felt more connected than normally, so I decided to record it so I wouldn't miss anything. So do you think that might be our lady talking? I don't know. That's uh, apparently well. Whatever, whoever it is, I think there's a lot of truth in it. So yeah, it's more. It's certainly something that I could not have written myself, as far as I'm concerned. I don't, you know, I don't normally think that way. This was like a special event on Christmas Eve. So. I guess you never know where things are coming. You know, there is a spiritual battle going on, and uh, this isn't about hearing voices. This is about trying to discern which thoughts are good and which aren't, you know, and uh, that's what the sermon is. 
there's always a battle well, going on in yeah. our heads. You know, we have a kingdom in our own mind as a kingdom. I was reading this book. It's called Up Out of the Rabbit Hole. There's like 5,000 thoughts per minute in an average person's mind that they concentrate on. And there's millions of thoughts, billions of thoughts going on. You know, it's crazy. So uh, there's our thoughts. There's God's thoughts. So, you know, the whole universe of thoughts is in our heads when we let it be. When I meditate, I try to do the same thing I do in the program, take what I need and leave the rest, you know. When you've got all these thoughts going, there's not much peace, so you have to meditate and come to a place of uh, peace by not trying to get rid of all our thoughts, but trying to just accept them and let them pass instead of holding on to them. It's much easier. Just hold on to the ones that you feel are legitimate. Yeah, that's good advice. And acting, just acting on the ones that are necessary. Simple discernment is this. Is this something that Jesus would say? Is this something that uh, is in the scriptures? It would be yeah, in scriptures. That's a good one. Yeah. Is this uh, something that the church would teach? So that's but a simple what, what, way. What 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 would Jesus say, and what would Jesus do? So, first, you have all these thoughts coming at you. You have to figure out which ones are from Jesus, and then you have to figure out which ones you're getting you should act on. And uh, there's three things that help help me from getting carried away. This program is, uh, does, it, does this have to be done? Does this have to be done? Does it have to be done now? Does it have to be done at all before you do anything? And that's part of the discernment process, too, for people with a situation like I have. People who have addictions have very rapid thinking, usually, and uh, have to try to slow down and be patient before acting on thoughts. And uh, I, I, I was uh, listening to a meditation the other day, and I heard something I really liked, and I it said, it said uh, practicing patience isn't just waiting longer. It's working on the attitude you have while you're waiting. You know, like sometimes even the practice patience, I'll get into a, a longer line at the store, especially if I'm in a hurry, when I don't really need to be anywhere. And uh, so that's practicing patience. But now this, this philosophy was, sure, it will wait in line, it's, it's, that's good practice if you wait in line where you don't have to. But then the other, other part of it is it's staying in a positive attitude while you're doing it. And that's harder. Because that impatience wants you to get things done in a hurry without regard for other people. And I have a, I have a little sticker on my refrigerator. God did not create hurry because I need that all the time because I tend to go too fast. Yeah, that's a good one. Say that again. God did not create hurry. Yeah. That one, yeah. And uh, practicing patience isn't about just learning how to wait. It's about learning how to keep the proper attitude while you're waiting. Mm -hmm. Positive attitude. So I'm trying to find another locution now that kind of uh, it's the same type of locution. Maybe I should find something uplifting this time because those were two a little bit uh, negative. Uh, this is from um, St. Therese. Having recently had a thought that I must share with uh, my Celine, her sister, one day when I was thinking of things I could do to save souls, a story from the gospel enlightened me. In that story, Jesus was showing his disciples some fields of ripe wheat. When he said, lift up your eye 
Lift up your eyes and see how the crops in the fields are ready for harvesting, and later, truly, the harvest is plentiful, but there are not enough workers. Ask the harvest master to send in more workers. What a mystery. Is Jesus not almighty? Do the creatures not belong to their creator? If so, then why does Jesus uh, say to ask the harvest master to send more workers? Why? Well, he does it because he has so much love for us that he wants us to take part in the salvation of souls. He wants to do nothing without us. The creator of the universe awaits the prayer of poor little souls to save other than souls redeemed like it at the price of his blood. Let me read that again. Oh, he does it because he has so much love for us that he wants us to take part in the salvation of souls. He wants to do nothing without us. The creator of the universe awakes the prayer of a poor little soul to save other souls redeemed like it at the price of his blood. Our apostle is not to go harvest the ripe wheat in the field. Jesus does not tell us to look down to the fields and go harvest them. Our mission is more sublime. Jesus told us to lift up our eyes and see. He tells us to see how many empty places there are in heaven and that it is up to us to fill them. He explains that we are his Moses praying on the mountain. Ask him for more workers, and he will send them. He is only waiting for a prayer or even a sigh from our hearts. Isn't the apostle of the prayer of more value than just simple words? Our mission is to train evangelical workers who will in turn save thousands of souls of whom we will be the mothers. Celine, if those were not the words of our Lord himself, who would ever believe them? I find our role to be a beautiful one. We have no need to envy the priests. That's reassuring that he wants us all in heaven with them, isn't it? That's right. And that, that he only acts out of love. He is always acting out of love. Never anything other than love and mercy. And he wants us to do everything with him. Right. But then sometimes we have these little episodes where we're under attack, too. I uh, I had panic attack, mild one again this week, and I have a prayer that somebody gave me for inner healing warfare. Have you heard that? Did you say you had a little panic attack this week? Yeah, I've been having a little trouble with, with anxiety. Hmm. So uh, I don't even know why. So I've got this prayer for inner healing. I'm going to read it. And yeah. uh, sometimes we get a little attacked, you know, because fear is the opposite of love. And sometimes we have to go through some fear and don't even know where it's coming from. But I think we know who it comes from. So uh, this is a prayer that I somebody gave me, and uh, once in a while I use it. This isn't my writing. So... Jesus, please come and heal my wounded and troubled heart. I beg you to heal the torments that are causing anxiety in my life. I beg you in a particular way to heal the underlying source of my sinfulness. I beg you to come into my life and heal the psychological harms that struck me in my childhood and from the injuries they have caused throughout my life. Lord Jesus, you know my burdens. I lay them on your good shepherd's heart. I beseech you by the merits of the great open wounds in your heart to heal the small wounds that are in mine. Heal my memories so that nothing that has happened to me will cause me to remain in pain and anguish filled with anxiety. Heal, O Lord, all those wounds that have been the cause of evil that is rooted in my life. I want to forgive all those who have offended me Look to those inner sores that make me unable to forgive. 
You who came to forgive the afflicted of heart, please heal my wounded and troubled heart. Heal, O Lord Jesus, all those intimate wounds that are the root cause of my physical illness. I offer you my heart. Accept it, Lord. Purify it and give me the sentiments of your divine heart. Heal me, O Lord, from the pain caused by the death of my loved ones. Grant me to regain peace and joy in the knowledge that you are the resurrection and the life. Make me an authentic witness to your resurrection, your victory over sin and death, and your loving presence among all men. Amen. Very good prayer. Yeah. It's a prayer for spiritual warfare. It's a good one. Yeah, I like it a lot. The thing that helps me with anxiety is I just go sit <clears throat> very quietly, just get real quiet. Yeah. And, you should probably uh, stay on this anxiety topic for a little while because I'm sure with the state of the world right now, there's a lot of people suffering from anxiety. Oh, yes. From personal but, illnesses uh, and from, you know, relatives passing away and from the state of the country right now. And uh, yeah, I I try to stay away from causes like watching the news and everything, but sometimes just real life is uh, stressful when you see what people are putting themselves through. And then you start to identify the wrong way, you know, thinking that will happen to you too. So uh, we tend to forget how much the Lord loves us and protects us all the time that we don't have to worry about things like that. It starts with a negative thought, this anxiety, and then you feed the negative thought and it gets pregnant and you can't get rid of it without a prayer like this because there are tormentors in our life and uh, we have to understand that Christ can overcome anything we're going through and if we're not getting relief it's because it's something we need to feel for some reason we don't understand related to our salvation I'm sure so love love and service is what helps me most of the time if I go out and start helping somebody else it gets me out of myself that's true that's why I go down a lot to Stanford and everything and uh, try to do things for my friends. And uh, when you're practicing love and service, I think you're doing the same thing Christ did when he was here, right? Well, when you give of yourself. Self-giving, yeah. Selfless acts, not selfish acts, right? So you had a beautiful so what, thing. What, what again is it, the healing for anxiety that you use, Bob? You go in a quiet spot? What? You go into a quiet spot when you're anxious? Well, yeah, I just uh, I just get in my my chair and I just get real still. Mhm. And I just I just let it go. Be still. That's a good one. And just just um, let it go. Turn it over, right? Yeah. A good psalm. Be still and know that I am God. Mm-hmm. Be still and know that I am. Be still and know. Be still. Be. That's the way I bring myself into center, doing that and then doing it backwards until you get to one word and trying to focus on the one word and clear all the other thoughts that are annoying you. Using the psalm. That helps too. But once you get to a level of panic, it's hard to do anything. You know, you've got to catch it early before. If possible, you've got to catch it when it's just a negative thought and try to turn a negative thought into a positive thought by moving a muscle and doing something to help somebody. Yeah. Uh, you can go to a quiet place. Most people with addiction like, like I had and like I still suffer from yeah. occasionally is the mind is going too loud to do that quiet thing. So we're better yeah. off getting out and helping somebody. And not staying focused on our inner thoughts, you know. Yeah, Move a muscle, way. change of thought is what they teach us. Giving of yourself. Self-giving. Give away what we've been so freely given, right? Right. This is a funny little location I had. It's about fear, too. I just came across this. Love kicked fear out of heaven. And told her to bring all my people back. And the one people back, I'll let you keep. 
So if it's true that love conquers all fear, then what conquers all love? Fear, right? Mm -hmm. So fear is the enemy. And it starts with anxiety. It starts with a negative thought. So catch it while it's early, more successful. Sometimes, so when something serious is going on, it can get to the point where you feel like you're coming out of your skin, and that's when it's not good. Here's another one uh, that helps me when I'm having a little anxiety. It's called at dusk. Setting your sails has to do with redirecting your thoughts. Set your sails for a new destination. Joyful bursts of light hide behind every cloud. The perfume of roses and wine fill the horizon. Place yourself at his disposal completely. Halfway is not enough. Stop regretting the past. Stay in the moment of peace and love. You are in my heart and I in yours. I have great plans for you and all my children. Plans with an everlasting future of peace and love. Lightened by the confidence of my holy face. Illuminated with the brightness greater than the sun. Will be your calling when fully revealed to you. Taste and see the goodness of my love one day at a time. Don't quit before the miracles happen. Be at peace. My peace be with you now. Do we pray or evangelize? That is the wrong question. Say that part. I didn't hear you, Bob. You got a little static on the line. Do we pray or evangelize? That is the wrong question. Our posture must be to pray in order to evangelize. A prayer which comes from the true source, our Lord, sent out to the fields to be sown, cultivated, and harvested. As in any environment of growth, it is not necessarily not, it is not necessarily the same people who tend to all its aspects from start to finish. <clears throat> Some can only draw from the source to give to others who benefit from it. No one can claim to harvest spiritually entirely on his or her own. Prayer is always at the very core of the mission. The missionary prayer from each of us is the sole condition for there to be a mission. You should represent the people before God, and you should bring their cases before God. That is our calling and our message, to stand before God like supplicants, so that everyone is represented before him. What a wonderful job we have to call God's attention to his children and raise them up to him. Yeah, it is all about prayer. And, and my main prayer for people lately is, Thy will be done for them, not theirs, Lord. You know, just yeah. if everybody could be doing his will, we'd have no wars. We'd be just peaceful people, you know. So, thy will be done, not mine. It's a powerful prayer. It doesn't tell God what to do, but, it, it, you know, please give them what you gave me, Lord. The ability to do your will. That's all I ask for my friends. Get myself have a lot out of the way and let him work, get myself out of the way and let him work through me, right? Right. Did you have a lot I'm of in the way, not with... good things can happen all the time, especially, you know, get myself in the way again, and that happens. You know, we're human. We can't stay totally out of his way. It just doesn't work that way. You know, we're not saints yet. Did you have a lot of meetings this week? All right. I go to at least two meetings a day most of the time. I love them. You yeah, know, I know you mentioned people, that. talk to people, and it's my, it's like my family, you know. And it's just always somebody that needs help. And just when you go to a meeting, you're helping everybody there because presence increases. Uh, you don't go, you just have to sit down and play in the chair. Huh? When you, when you don't go, people wonder, where is Joe? Oh, that's true. When I don't see people that are there most of the time, you really get concerned and start praying for them, you know. Then you hear people sharing about a relapse, going back and doing stuff, and then uh, 
they make it back in and you say, yeah, but for the grace of God, go I, you know. Keeps it clean. So the constant influx in and out of people, and some people are there for a while, and then some people have disappeared. It's a, it's a real, real, you know, it's a real practice of being with the sick and hungry to our program. People call in. Sometimes they get it and sometimes they don't, and they're always accepted. So one of the things that give me, give me great solace for me is music. You know, I love music now, seeing karaoke and everything, and uh, some of the poems have turned into songs. And uh, Are you still doing those? Oh, yeah. Yeah, right now I'm practicing a love song written by Josh Groban called Closer, and uh, that's beautiful. You know, all music is kind of spiritual unless you get the heavy metal or something, you know. It's just well, you said in one, in, in one group that you were doing, you were um, doing like uh, karaoke. Karaoke, yeah. I, I did Jar of Hearts. Jar of Hearts is about a broken relationship. It's a song about a broken relationship. And I sang that and it was like I was singing to my, my old self, you know. Because that's the way I used to be, just in and out of people's lives and not caring what happened, you know, that type of thing. It's a song like that. Beautiful song. It's a broken love song, you know. But, uh, it's romantic. So I sang that at the last karaoke, and this time I'm practicing Josh Groban's uh, song Closer, which is a love song. And it, this is a positive one. So I did a negative one, now I'm doing a positive one. And we had a great time at the first karaoke. You know, pe- people really got into it, and it's really good singing your way to sobriety, you know, it's nice. So oh, I, I wrote this oh, one, I wrote this, I wrote this poem about songs, and then, you know, it's because I have songs in my heart now that he put there, he, he let me write my own songs and get my own music, so that's pretty neat, so I wrote this, I have a song in my heart, and the song in my heart is the Lord of the Dance, and the song said, be still, and know that I am yours, I'm the whisper in the wind and the sparkle in your eyes. The mystery that lives forever in the kingdom in your mind. I weep when you weep and sing when you sing. In the winds of time, my secret is revealed. In the fullness of time, I will save you all. I will take all your tears and dry them in the wind-driven rains of my grace. My peace be with you now and at the end of time. I will never abandon you. I am the Lord of the dance. Enjoy the music. You wrote that, huh? Yeah. Is there, did you, did you have music to it? No, I think I should put music to that one, though, if I can, if he gives me any, yeah. see, I would like that music. I have a song in my heart, and the song in my heart is the Lord of the dance. And the song said, be still, I know that I am yours. I'm the whisper in the wind and the sparkle in your eyes. The mystery that lives forever in the kingdom in mind. I weep when you weep and sing when you sing. In the winds of time, my secret is revealed. In the fullness of time, I will save you all. I will take all your tears and dry them in the wind-driven rains of my grace. My peace be with you now and at the end of time. I will never abandon you. I am your Lord of the dance. Enjoy the music. Something like that, maybe. But, yeah, that's a good start. A good start. Just tune it up a little bit. Problem is, yeah. I don't write music, so I can't remember how I sang it from time to time. But once I get it right, usually I can remember it. I guess I don't remember it until it gets right, so that's a good thing. That's good. Yeah, it's just... Anyway. <clears throat> trying to find one I know. Another one on gratitude, right? That turned into a, fall, a song. This is the one I wrote on East Smoke for my sponsor's wife. She asked me to write a poem on her birthday. Gratitude. Finding the sun behind every cloud. Seeing a smile behind a frown. Loving without conditions. Living each day with joy. Knowing that life will never end. Yet living each day like it's the end. Forgetting the past and ignoring the future. Praying for peace and accepting chaos. Chasing rainbows and thunderstorms. Gently riding the roller coaster called life. 
For time is short, but love is long, and all of life is a happy song. And when we stop fighting, love is born. They say when you when you sing, you pray twice, right? Isn't that? Yeah. You've heard, yeah. I, I can't. Well, when I when I go to church, I feel bad for the people who don't sing, and it's so silent in most churches these days. It's actually disturbing. You know, nobody yeah. joins the choir, and it's just like zombie land. You know, I, I don't like what's going on lately. You know, some churches have very, very good singing groups, but usually the parishioners don't join in. You know, have you noticed that? Yeah. Father yeah. Bill at, at St. Bridget's used to beg the people to sing, and the more he asked, the less they did. You know, it was horrible. Uh, it's just like. One person singing, you know, that's it. Nobody else wants to be involved. I think that's a, a sign of a deadening spirit, isn't it? That's like uh, apostasy. That's bad. Yeah, it's, um, it's when you're filled with the spirit, you want to sing. I never used to until I met Rita down there in Florida, and she said, don't worry about how you sound. Just keep singing, and the Lord will uh, right. get you where you need to be, just like. Just keep praying and get you where you need to be, you know? Right. And, uh, this is a uh, locution I think I got uh, when I put together that Holy Face devotion, and I got like a, a little thank you from my Lord. You know, after trying to discern whether it was Him telling me to do it or not, and I asked Him if He could let me know if it was really Him, and He said, I got this location. As far as, you know, remember that program I was putting together about uh, feeding poor people in church basements and having the Holy Face devotion and doing the, you know, the Tuesday night adoration of the Holy Face? So I got this. And I, I still don't know what's going with that. I haven't made a presentation. I'm supposed to talk to Father Al down in Stanford. I told him I wanted to speak oh, yeah. to him, but he was busy last week. I'm sure he'll help. So I got this. Uh, we are pleased with the offerings you've been making. Listen carefully. Speak even more carefully. Silence is frequently the best response. Waste not time trying to figure things out. Think and act under the desires of the heart, not the mind. Place your trust in Jesus and your life will be beyond your wildest dreams. Stay focused on living a humble life of love and service. Act only on what is directly in front of you. Be patient and persistent in your silent time each morning. More will be revealed as needed. So in other words, wait for God to create something or it will be a mess. You know, frequently, it'll give you an idea, but you have to practice patience sometimes because you can't expect everybody to be as enthusiastic as you are right away. And if you give people too much too soon, you tend to turn them off. That's right. And I used to try to roll over people, and I can't do that anymore. If you can't do that when you're working for God, you can only do that when you're working for yourself. And this is what I told him after he told me that. <clears throat> After I got the locution, I said, Thank you, Lord. I feel that peace and stillness now, and I know that's you. You are the stillness in my heart that only enters into my consciousness when I am willing to let it enter my mind, which is usually chaotic. The key to the door between my heart and mind can only be opened with the key of willingness. That willingness happens when I sit in silence and contemplate your love and mercy. When I stop attaching to my thoughts and surrender to your silent words, when I feel you gaze upon me with unconditional approval, when I start to understand that this is your body and not mine, and that what I don't know is vastly more important than what I think I know, then in an unexpected flash of hope, I suddenly, for a joyous microsecond, understand with my heart only a new truth, that you are in me, that I am in you, that we are one, that the only thing that can separate me from you is free will, and that that gift that you also experienced on earth is an irrevocable gift, curse, from the Father. 
It's a gift if I use it to seek you, and a curse if I use it to seek myself. It is a gift if I use it to serve others, and a curse if I use it to serve myself. It's a gift if I love and accept others unconditionally, and a curse if I love and accept others with conditions. It's so hard, though, Lord, to act on what I know is true, to love my enemies, to love the people who hurt me, to forgive the people who kill me as you did, to accept dying for my brothers and sisters. Thank you for this time with you today, Lord. With hope and gratitude, your brother, friend, and lover, Joe. When did you do that? Uh, March. March 2nd, 2017. Then I had this other one the same day. I got this one. It's a little bit funny. but I said, we think God is in us and works through us. But have we ever considered we are part of God? God is everywhere. God is everything. And that looking for God is like a dog chasing its own tail. The only thing that can separate us from God is free will. So I got those two in March. One short one, one long one. Then I got this whole part of God that... uh, I've tried to better understand the ununderstandable mystery of God, which is not good. I believe today that we are all a part of God, unless we think we are not a part of God. But even when we think we are apart from God, we are still a part of God. We are God's skin. When we get out of the way, God works through me. Perfect humility is total absence of self, and that's impossible until I die. Because as I learned in Baltimore Catechism at age seven, but now I believe to be true, God is everywhere, God is one, God is everything. Everyone is in God, everything is a part of God, everywhere is a part of God. God comes to us disguised as our life. And this one was in March too. Come fear no more, my love is here, my time has come, my ways will save, my wounds will heal, my light will shine. Listen and learn. Act and be saved. Now is the time. Here is the day. Like, no more is the pain. No more is the grief. My mercy endures. My love overcomes. My tears wash your souls. My eyes see your needs. Surrender today. Give me your all. Answer the call. No deed is too small. I love you all. Follow the light. The dark will fall. And then this is really... This one's old, but it's gold in my mind, and it kind of follows with those. And, you know, this was was like in 2008 maybe, but it was when he told me, love is the window to knowing me. Without it, nobody can see my face. My heart is full of sorrow for those who never learn the power of love. Love accepts all and is perfect in forgiveness. To forget yourself is to love yourself. Love all is to love me, for I am love. And to be in love is to be in me. Come now into my heart and know the true meaning of divine love. In the moment, love can become perfect in the silence of your mind. Thoughtless is fullness, and the cloud of not knowing is found pure love. I am pure love. How greatest is love found in total surrender to my will. He who contemplates my word day and night, the Holy Spirit, is with you forever. His love is inexhaustible and almighty. His mercy endures forever. Fear no man. Remember always the truth written about Mary and Martha. I am allowed to favor and have favorites. I am not accountable to the ACLU, and I pick and choose who I favor. I came and got the people who think that came and got me. Thinking is a human problem. Contemplation is a remedy for it. Love is the key to salvation. Start with me, and everything else will come freely. Good stuff, Joe. Yeah. What a great God we have, you know. He speaks to the least of us and to the most of us. And some people never have the grace to hear him because they keep getting themselves in the way like I used to. And I feel so bad for people who don't have the type of relationship that I developed that he gave me. I didn't develop it. It was my time, and he came and gave it to me as a free gift of love. And he'll do that for anybody. But he can't do that if we keep imposing our own will in our lives. We've got to start doing things to help other people, to serve other people with the right motives. Not doing it for ourselves. My sponsor told me something very powerful about two years ago that I I really believe is gospel. 
because I was having trouble discerning what to do. And I said, you know, if I can't get a hold of you, how do I know that I'm doing something right or not if I can't get a hold of my spiritual guy? And he said, and he doesn't usually tell me anything, but he says, I'll tell you this because ask yourself this question. Before you do anything, if you can't call anybody else before you have to do something and you're not comfortable with it, ask this question. Is it selfish or is it selfless? If it's selfless, do it. If it's selfish, don't do it. Good word of wisdom. That's a good, right? that's a good piece of wisdom, yeah. Yeah. Well, a lot but of you, time, Joe. Yeah. Okay, Bob. Uh, so, Father, so, Father in heaven, we thank you for another edition of Cry Oneness with uh, Joe Avalos. And uh, we'll be back again next week, uh, same time, same station, with uh, Joe. And uh, we have a uh, little yeah. blessing thank, here that I'll share thank, thank you all. Who, thank you all who have been visiting the website and registering. We have over 700 people registered on the website right now. So that's Yeah, good. that's what you were saying. Yeah, it's pretty so, good in three uh, months. Yeah. So I wanted to share this. Uh, I wanted to share this blessing if I can find it here now. Well, I think uh, here's one. If we don't have time, Bob, Lord Jesus, Thy will be done for all of us in this world, not our own, and we'll be at peace. Very good. Well, here we are. May the Lord bless us, protect us from all evil. And bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. We'll see you next week. Have a good night. Bye bye. Bye bye. We hope you enjoyed the program and will join us back for another show on WCAT Radio. This is Sebastian Mafud. Good day.